Okay, cool. Okay, welcome guys. Good to see you here. We have another webinar within the framework of the weekly fasting group. And if you are watching this video later on, um, this group is a very big international WhatsApp group and we fast every week for 24 hours. That's the common denominator in this group. So in, in between, of course, we have a really good chat discussing different issues related to health, spirituality, self-development and other things. And we also have those webinars weekly. So um, if you are watching this video later, and if those ideas appeal to you, especially abstaining from food for 24 hours at least every week, you will find my WhatsApp number. My name is Arik. I'm the moderator of this group. And you are welcome to send me a WhatsApp message with your name, and I will add you to this group. It's, of course, free, and it will always be free. Uh, so, um, okay, and today we have Karen with us. Welcome. Welcome, Karen. Hello. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> and we're going to learn a lot, but I have to tell you, like, our subject today, mostly in the direction of pets, I have never had, I've, I've almost never had my own pets. So uh, you, you, will, you will enlighten me as well about it, and I hope we will connect for those who don't have pets to the human aspect of fasting. But we will start with a short guided meditation to get us grounded, to get us here and now. So, Karen, please, over to you. Okay, thank you, Eric. We'll go straight into the meditation then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody, if you, as you meditate, bring, bring the attention into your heart, into the core of your very being, and feel what it most what is most real within you feel whether you can be vulnerable enough to open the heart completely and to know yourself completely and to live in the truth of yourself completely and feel what it is like to empty out completely. Everything you have acquired for, through others, just empty out. Everything that you've imitated from others, just let go. Let go of the imitation that others have demanded of you. Can you let go of all of those demands of the social structure to be free of all thoughts and emotions? Feel what it is what it is to be completely empty of the unreal, of the imaginary, of language, and abide in that supreme intuitive knowing that is always here, that serenity And whatever chains keep you entrenched in thought, just let them go. And feel what it is like to be free. Free of worry. Free of calculation. Free of concern. Free of concern how you look to the other. And can you be fearless in the face of life and of death? Can you be open-minded? 
can you be open-minded to continually learn and grow and discover more of the ultimate nature of the supreme reality that you embody. As you return to your body and open your eyes, be conscious of that emptiness behind the thoughts and let's bring that to our beautiful meeting tonight. Okay, Karen, thank you so much. So beautiful messages. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys, so let's delve into the webinar. So, Karen, for the people who don't know you, could you please present yourself and tell us a little bit what made you, you know, kind of think out of the box, go on this cleansing path, spiritual path, whatever you feel like sharing, you know. Okay. Okay. So, um, it, 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 my my journey has been more spiritual than it has um, diet and 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 fasting. But in in when when I got when I my about well eight years ago, my, one of my dogs was permanently sick, just permanently sick. She was very young. She was still three to four years old, um, and she just kept getting tummy aches that were waking me up in the night. And I'd been down all of the vets I've been down all the all of the avenues that I could possibly explore in that I'd been to conventional vets I'd been to um I'd been to holistic vets I'd explored everything and there just weren't any answers whatsoever so I'd resorted to joining all different Facebook groups um to try and search for answers but they're just you know I just couldn't find any um anyway a long story short I did find somebody who who had made a post um, on a Facebook group who was talking about natural hygiene, um, the, the, pr the principles of natural hygiene, which is very much about fasting and eating healthily. And um, she was recommending to try those with, with dogs. Um, so anyway, long story short, I tried, um, she recommended a 48 hour fast for my dog that was struggling with the tummy problems and I it was it was a I had tried fasting at that point and and failed dismally so it was a, a really it was a really emotional thing for me to be able to embark on knowing that I couldn't actually fast but that I expected my dogs to fast <laughs> so um so but anyway it and the dogs actually, apart from it being a habitual feeding pattern um, in that I used to walk them and when they got home from their walk, they would always be fed. Um, one, what I did during the process of fasting them, instead of feeding them, I, um, I would sit down on the sofa with them and just cuddle them and give them attention. And then their mind would just obviously go off of the whole feeding thing and they would fast. And it actually was a it was me who was literally counting down the hours. Um, the dogs actually dealt with it, you know, as you know, they just slept the whole time. Um, and and I could actually see them transforming, even though it was just 48 hours. I could actually see them transforming. Their energy levels were higher. Um, they they were just, yeah, full of energy. Um, and and I can honestly say since that very, very first time of fasting them, and I fasted them both because obviously it was going to be impossible to fast one without the other. And if I'm honest, they both had the same health problems, be it they manifested in different symptoms. Um, but yeah, my female who had been waking me up for months uh, with tummy aches, she was literally kicking her tummy Um despite me thinking I was feeding her correctly and she never ever even to this day and that's obviously well years ago now um she's she's never 
resorted to those problems, ne never had those same problems ever again. So that's a miracle to fasting. So anyway, so from my per personal journey, obviously that was a wake up call for me uh, in that um, I, I established, I learned a few more principles about feeding them. I'd very much relied on commercial food, pet food, com commercial raw pet food um, for them. But um, I, I was encouraged to actually feed them proper meat. So actually to go to the supermarket and buy chicken, um, but to cut off the skin because dogs um, don't don't do well with the ex with excess fat. So to cut off the skin and if there was any excess fat on the chicken, then to cut that off as well. So those were the you know, that that was the principle. And then obviously to fast on, on a regular basis. Um, I was recommended to fast them sort of every sort of 48 hours of feeding and then 48 hours of fasting. Um, the dogs didn't really warm to that. So once I'd got over the initial, um, the initial learning how you know changing their diet and they'd they'd have been established in that they everything changed for them um a bit like it does obviously on a human level literally their coats shined their coats changed color they'd been wishy-washy colors but they became gleaming and and there's you know all all symptoms that that again are very much like on the human like um they'd had itchy gunky ears they'd had um itching itchiness constant itching um yeah but the biggest thing for me um I'd had to get them their teeth professionally cleaned um and yeah so for the biggest thing for me was the coats literally change color change to glossy and you know I followed all sorts of tips and things for you know keeping them healthy coats and things like you do with reading books and things but nothing had actually ever done it but yeah literally within three months um they their their bodies had yeah they were different dogs they were completely different dogs so that obviously like I say opened my eyes and and I then obviously was I, I did my first five day smoothie um juices and smoothie fast um which I actually again noticed for myself how um how much energy I had I was expecting myself to be tired and not be able to do a day's work but actually I felt it felt completely different I was seeing customers and actually quite proud that I was doing these five days of just juices and people were like were were yeah oh my god I can't believe you're doing that but but yeah I said it's not what you would expect it actually feels amazing <laughs> so so that was that and from that fast I wanted to keep on and the person who'd recommended that particular fast was Jason Val he's quite a big person in the UK for doing smoothies and juicing fasts um and he did a book that once you'd done these various fasts that you could then carry on on a healthier eating program so I, I followed one of those um and then um again I carried on very much like juices um that juices were an important part of my life but it was more about an overall healthier eating style until I met um a lady called Alice um and she was she was she was she was a yeah, I, I think I'd followed the master fast system, and I think she had answered one of my um, one of my posts on the master fast system, and so I went over to her her Facebook group, and um, and she was advertising doing um, a citrus juice cleanse, a ten day citrus juice cleanse, with an optional dry fast um, halfway through this citrus juice cleanse. Um, and um yeah so i embarked on that and and there was a hundred of us that actually started and there was actually six that finished <laughs> so it just shows we all have the best intentions <laughs> but um but yeah it was it, it was challenging but that was a real turnaround for me i i just knew from the depths of my heart that that wow how different i felt i felt so much better the citrus was tough because five days 
into the citrus, I found that it was very, it was very acidic. And I, I learned that it actually was more obviously the waste that had built up inside of me and the citrus going down on top of that that was actually creating the acidity. So although when I embarked on the 10 day um, citrus cleanse, I had zero interest in doing the dry fast, or no, I don't think it was zero interest. I didn't think I could do the dry fast. So, but when it got to day, I think it was day four or day five, it was actually this, the acidity was, was so uncomfortable that I was either going to give up completely at that point or do the dry fast and see if I could manage that. So I did, I, I did, I did, it was 36 hours. I went to bed, I finished obviously having my juices, went to bed with, with nothing um, and then woke up the next morning and then I was on like a countdown, <laughs> literally, literally counting down um, how, I could get through the 36 hours and I have to say during those first 36 hours they would have obviously been my first ever fast that I'd actually gone that distance and I felt there was there was definitely aches and pains I definitely my back ached quite a lot which I've since found was kidney it's often your kidneys um that that creates back ache when you're fasting um obviously it means that the body's actually healing the kidneys rather than um rather than actually the kidneys are struggling or anything but um but yeah so I did that that was that and then um and then yeah and and that meant that my body was clean enough having done that fast um that meant my body was clean enough to finish the rest of the the citrus cleanse um which yeah so that that was revelation and then I ended up doing two of those a, a, a year a two 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 citrus cleanses a year but it it gave me a much better foundation um for the overall lifestyle change so yeah so would you like to go on answer, asking me a different question or have I yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so what was uh, so since that point until now what was your history of you can also relate to the spirit to your spiritual search and you yeah. can also relate to your uh, like cleansing and fasting journey or health journey okay okay well that um that 10 day citrus um i think it again i think the dry fasting made me obviously have the have the belief that i could do it now and i followed alice who obviously was the um uh, was the lady that had led that led that initial 10 day cleanse so I followed her um and um and yeah and I I stayed on again I I, I started investigating more people so I followed Lauren Lockman he again was a, a big and I didn't do his water fasting because by now I was pretty convinced on the dry fasting but I did follow a lot of his YouTubes and learn a lot about the fruit so I so I went from eating from my healthier eating diet to weaning onto more more and more fruits um so but it was mainly fruit juices and smoothies but but I definitely went a long period of time where I transitioned almost almost totally to fruit um following Lauren Lockman in and and bringing in these I was bringing in random 10 day citrus fast because I would find friends that wanted to do it and I would obviously do it along with them um and then and then obviously Alice was following and and you could ask her questions and things um and so that that was that was about 2018 2019 um and then uh and then I was then I then I ah oh, that's it then Alice bought in cascade fasting and I don't know if you've ever heard of cascade fasting but she basically promoted it as a 30-day cascade fast which was basically you would start with one day of fruit and juices then you'd do a one day dry fast then you'd do two days of fruits and smoothies then you'd do two days of dry fasting and then you do three days fruits and smoothies and three days fasting. Dry, fa yeah, three days, then four 
until five. And then you had the option if you wanted to and, and to do five. And by the time you've done from one day right the way to five of each, um, obviously your body was so clean. That was what I noticed was obviously it was so kind, such a kind way to incre increase the fasting window because obviously you were you started with just one day and one day of fruits then two days and two days of you know fruits so it it was such gentle way that I, I by the time it got to the five days of dry fasting I absolutely you know I didn't struggle at all it just was you know it was a sale obviously not only had my body got used to it and I've heard Phil Dr Filanov recommending cascade fasting when you're when you're beginning so um so yeah so that was amazing and so much so that I carried on I actually did 30 days and then I carried on and did another 30 days literally the next month um and that yeah so that would have been I yeah think Karen, been. Karen but I'm sorry 30 days of what of a juice fast or yeah no so it's 30 days that that whole process is 30 days ah, okay okay so one day fruit one day dry fast mm. two day fruit two day dry fast mm -hmm. three day fruit three day up to the five days and five days dry fast so that's a 30 day process and mm. then literally and then literally the next month I reversed it so I did did the five days and five days and then came back five five four four mm, three three two two one one and it was yeah so it was amazing and I yeah completely you know you just go to these different levels don't you and then and, and that's and that's what happened with that process and then yeah and then I went back I did a um somebody recommended um a lemon 90 day um neat lemon juice first on an empty stomach and that completely rejuvenates your liver so I educate you know and it's interesting because you start and you think you know you literally struggle to drink neat lemon juice and I was drinking like a pint so like that much I was drinking that much of neat lemon juice without water um, like undiluted yeah yeah completely undiluted neat. lemon so juice undiluted lemon undiluted. juice yeah. undiluted. On, an, okay. on an empty stomach first thing in the morning and apparently 90 days you have completely rejuvenated your liver I mm. mean the reality is I'd, I probably didn't have much problem with my liver after my cascade cascade dry fasting thing but but anyway I did it and and like I say by the time it's very interesting because initially you you're literally having to struggle you know you're just sipping to get this lemon juice down but as time goes by your body just you I was actually coming back from walking the dogs in the morning and actually craving that lemon juice so it was just mm. like you know and I was having to train myself to drink it slowly because obviously you you, you know you you want to drink it's a kinder on everything if you sip it rather than drink it right back yeah so. Karen, Karen but I'm sorry but then uh, this uh, this regimen of drinking lemon juice um, so um, um, after that after you drink can you eat as usual or you are supposed to fast or to follow a particular diet or it, how this works yeah for, for just doing the liver then if you uh, uh, so a few of my friends have obviously followed that and they they aren't as obviously on such a fruitarian type lifestyle as me they're on normal but they what they do is they tend to leave an hour after the lemon juice before they eat anything mm, you know I see. Anything I see. Else, just okay. to allow it to do its to clean to do its work yeah um, sure and then, and then obviously then you know some of them eat normal diets but they've really you know really noticed the difference with just doing that simple mm. tip yeah and I, yeah Karen and I'm just curious so in this regimen so um which which one so you're supposed to drink lemon juice for for a month yeah or for how long three months 12 weeks for three months nine, nine zero days yeah, yeah nine once days. uh a, so once a day in the morning yeah first thing yeah on an empty stomach yeah and which uh, amount of juice are you supposed to drink well, officially it's 250 mils, mm -hmm. but I, again, I, I always go big, you know, I always go big, <laughs> I always go the extreme. So, um, so I was taking a pint, but yeah, officially it's mm. like, yeah, 250 mils. Mm, um, okay. Okay. And uh, are you supposed to drink it uh, all at once or you're supposed to sip on it or it doesn't matter? Yeah, I would say a sip it. I would just say that because it's, you know, generally it's kinder. Obviously, you don't have to sip it 
really really slowly but I just wouldn't drink it all back I would just yeah mm-hmm. take, yeah take okay. mouthfuls and and the reality is with lemon juice you probably can't drink it right the way back anyway. yeah yeah <laughs> and um uh, but it so it didn't damage your teeth so you're uh, like animal no, uh, no? No, it, it's very interesting. I, again, I, I have heard people have problems with their teeth, you know, w- with fruitarian lifestyle, with with different things. But um, a- Alice um, a- a- has always helped me with an ed- on an education basis. If there's ever been anything I haven't understood or I've heard people say, but she always said that fruit juices will actually turn into alkali turn out although they're citrus and acidic if you use them on the outside your body converts them into alkali into an alkaline base so mm-hmm. i think i just trusted that mm, and, okay. and therefore obviously i i think a lot of this our reactions are to fasting lifestyle or to the eating lifestyle i think a lot of it is based on our own personal beliefs right and if we believe it will hurt you know damage our teeth mm-hmm. it will you know and if if we believe wholeheartedly and I mean it's not just like lip service I think you've got to fit no and that's that was luckily Alice was such a fantastic role model um that I just whole you know I just trusted everything she said to me and if she said I could do a fast I did and if she said I you know if she said this was going to be fine for my teeth I believed her and so I didn't I've never suffered with my teeth at all. Ah, okay. So even even while drinking less, uh, like uh, undiluted lemon juice, so you didn't mm-hmm. use any straw or anything like that. You just uh, just like that, and and after that, did you uh, like squish the water? Did you wash your mouth with the water, or not necessarily? No. No. Oh, that's very that's very interesting. Yeah, that's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay. But may- maybe we will. Uh, maybe some of the guys who are participating now, maybe they have some questions because the best framework is to talk for some 20 minutes and then to ask some questions and then to talk again. That's the best. Rebecca, hello. You want to ask a question? Like, uh, as for now, you're muted. Have to unmute yourself. Hey, I'm okay. Harry. I want to ask a question. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. But uh, Rebecca is going to ask her question and then you. So, sure, thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Karen. Hi, Alex. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask, I'm very interested, like I'm also on this path, so I'm very interested in learning different um, uh, different um, uh, from, from other people's experience. Like, so you're saying like this lemon, um, uh, like 250 millimeter, milli, Milligram, liter. milliliter, milliliter. Uh, it's 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 a glass, right? It's it's a yeah, glass. exactly. That's a standard. It's like you know, like that mug for you know, it's a standard mug or yeah, just yeah, a, a glass. The, so you drink it for three months, uh, in in the morning on an empty stomach, right? Yeah. And then and then what do you eat? Like uh, I mean, uh, raw vegan or what? I mean, okay, so it's the whole point of the exercise is to regenerate the liver. So that that's the whole idea that, that, you know, that's the whole theory behind it. And so, you know, these people, you know, for whatever reason, obviously believe that they need to do something to the liver for, for, you know, for detox, the liver often, you know, has problems and that type of thing. So, and for me, I was fascinated because like I say, I'd learned that this would help the liver. So I was up to try you know, to learn anything I could learn a bit like yourself now. Um, so yeah, so it was, it, so it wasn't necessarily people like you and me who are, you know, completely regenerating our whole body with fasting and things. So it was for anybody that had, you know, whether they're on a normal diet, whether that, you know, whatever they wanted by following this 90 day, neat lemon juice anybody could actually regenerate their liver wow that's that's thank you for yeah that's amazing so yeah um, and I've, 
I've had friends who have, you know, they're, they're not anything like eating and, and fasting like we do. And they have had amazing results with it. So that, you know, they've seen um, stone, stones pass. Yeah, that, which I think are the more gold, gold stones. But but yeah, they've seen green stones come out. So it, it, it definitely does something. <laughs> Okay, and, and how long, uh, I mean, and then how long do you wait until you eat something or drink something? So uh, I, I, I said to Eric that I would, see, I would go, see, I would go from there onto a smoothie or a juice at that particular time yeah. when I was doing it. But for the, you know, and, and I would have allowed, an, a, a, I mean, I again, I would generally come back from walking my dogs in the morning and that would be my, you know, my juice as I sat down with my dogs from having a walk so I then generally which would possibly be about eight o'clock but I would say for most anybody else if you left it an hour that would allow the lemon juice to do its work before you start putting anything else into your body so but I, I often left it longer than that but but it certainly wouldn't it would be effectual if you've done it on an empty stomach and you leave it an hour that lemon juice will have done its job and worked around your body in that time it's interesting you know the liver flush protocol you, you they also say you should use uh oil and that i know and i've never been comfortable with that yeah in order to soften that also works but it's interesting about the lemon at least you're not going to suffer or get uh no no uh be um nausea and another thing I wanted to ask you um, on the on the uh, raw I, I assume you're on the raw vegan path, right? Yeah. So the thing is about uh, when you need this heavy taste. I mean, um, do you still crave for I don't know something heavier, something oily, something uh, um, spicy? Do you still, uh, I, I've noticed that uh, it, it lessens, it, it becomes less and less, but I still need it or I don't know, should, do, do you still have it or have you, have you completely went off of it or what? Uh, I went through a phase of, of salads and, and, and in the summer I went through, it was strange because I've never really liked salads. Um, and mainly because salads, I always had to have a dressing, you know, because eating a salad, I just couldn't eat it on its own. So I thought, well, what, that doesn't make sense. Why, you know, if I've got to go and get a dressing to eat a salad, that, that that's not right to me. Whereas with fruit, I enjoy fruit as it is, you know, I, I'll eat apples and pears and, and I enjoy that as it is. So, but in, but when I felt that craving, like when, you know, when I'm with others and they're eating food and, you know, and that's the hardest time for me, um, then I would have a salad and an avocado with some lemon juice over the top of an avocado would be enough to take that, to get, take that edge off. Uh, but, but now it's winter that was throughout the summer I was having salads and I, I you know and I, with the salads I would often have a sweet craving after it I'd want I'd want a dessert or something because I'd associated that with a meal well I was lucky because Kasha recommended putting fruit into my salads in the summer at which I did and that completely took that away because I used to eat a load of dates after I'd had a salad meal because I wanted that sweet you know dessert feeling um but then she recommended and so I started putting grapes into my salads and raspberries into my salads and that like I say not only it's dealt with the whole meal thing and and I didn't end up with a sweet a fruit a sweet craving after um after my salad meal that just shows that it's all about conditioning and it's all about uh, you know, associating things like you need something sweet. I uh, I need the salty taste yeah. you know, or the yeah. oily test taste. So that's what I'm trying to work on now. Of course, uh, as you as you keep on this path, 
then you feel like you need it less and less. Yeah. But you still, yeah, I feel that, but it's still, it's a journey, it's a process. So I'm just trying to learn things like, uh, what uh, what would you say about um, oil, um, olive oil, tahini? Is, is that? Is that- I, I would say they're all transitional, you know, and like tahini is a zillion times better than something else that you could eat, do you know? So, and for me, that's what I've always done is I've always, you know, like say, if if I want something, and I look back and I think, well, you know, this time last year or this time six months ago, you know, then I'm I'm beating myself up for something that six months ago I wouldn't have thought anything about, you know, eating. So tahini, when you look at the big scale of things, you know, is it, nuts, you know, it's nut, nut, nut butter, you know. So, so yeah, if I if I had a craving for something, yeah, you know, like say, I know avocados help me. Avoc- yeah, and, and like I say, now if I eat an avocado, you know, I went through a stage of having an avocado every day, you know. Oh, and, and, then, and that was like, that, if I had that day. craving and wanted something like you're describing, avocado, and like I say, I'd, spring, I'd squeeze some lemon juice over it and it's to die for. <laughs> that would always be. And then bananas were always, you know, if it was the other end, like bananas, and I, I mash up. Um, overripe bananas and put them in the freezer and that's like a delicious ice cream yeah that's, I understand. A, that's that, a good that ice just, cream that just comes to show it's all about conditioning and it's all about uh emotions it's uh, or habits because i don't crave ice cream i haven't eaten it for, for years now but for instance i need the heaviness so you're just saying it's about a, a phase it's a on the on the transition so it's, it's just it's not going to be forever so for a yeah. while and then slowly uh, uh slowly then you uh need it less and less or not eat it every day but every other day uh yeah understand what you're saying so yeah, yeah. and and you you'll get to the point where because again it's funny you say you you don't um crave ice cream well i went through a big phase where ice cream you know everyone could be eating ice cream ice creams you know my mouth with my family and things and that didn't do anything for me but it, you know right in the beginning my hardest thing to give up ever was pizza and you know it, 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 that was the hardest hardest and I went like you know went from normal pizza to vegan pizza to making my own with sweet potato you know as the base and then and eventually like you say eventually even the thought now of a pizza the cheese oh you know it it just is like I couldn't even go there in a million years so it just like it's exactly what you're describing so you need those tools you know you need those cruxes you know to to get you through and eventually like you say your body yeah for Pete for me to actually say that about pizza but like the thought of the greasy cheese and you know that's what it all the reason I used to love pizza was because of all of those things who doesn't like pizza it's because I've started my journey a lot long time ago but the the raw vegan raw vegan lifestyle I've only discovered uh two years ago three two or three years ago so that's why I'm struggling with that I mean it's getting better it's 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 a process it's not like some it keeps uh, getting better, keeps improving. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, but pizza and ice cream and coffee, it's things I've gotten rid of a lot many, many years ago. So now it doesn't bother me. Of course, that when, when at the beginning, of course, I crave these things. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, I just want to say that we have uh, more questions. Okay. So, yeah. So, all right, Vital, is you. it okay? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and thank you for all this tip about uh liver uh, uh regenerating with a lamb. Yeah. thank Enjoy. you enjoy and okay. feedback let us know <laughs> yeah okay cool now venkata you wanted to ask something right yeah um who was the guy who wanted to ask something before revital started I'm sorry, I'm mute on. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so... yes. Yeah. So nothing. I mean, I uh, loved. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I I heard everything uh, from both of the uh, both of the, you guys. Uh, so my question is about 
my animal like in my pet actually so and uh, in one of the description you said that you know the fasting also helped the uh, pets to recover from the diseases right so i just want to know the perspective of uh, how we can do the fasting for the pets and what type of food we can give the for the pets i'm actually i'm a i'm a vegan guy right now i'm a, not a raw vegan but a vegan guy i'm also doing a lot of fasting uh, with the group i i do weekly once fasting and once some, sometimes i also do a lot of dry fasting as well like you know when i got covid i did uh, Uh, i think four day or five day uh, dry fasting and i was able to recover uh, very fast uh, very e- easily but i just want to know how uh, we can do the same thing uh, to our animals like i have a pet um, my dog is a golden doodle uh, he got some nail issues like nail infection and everything so wanted to know the perspective of how we can treat uh, our dogs with this type okay. of fasting okay so my first question is mm-hmm. what are you feeding him at, uh, yes moment? i yeah at the, i mean at the moment right now we changed my dogs right from kibble to um, what do you call cooked food uh, cooked uh, what do you call turkey and those things i we, i do uh, my own cooking uh, for the dog my wife is doing cooking for her um, so we changed the diet from kibbles to um, um, i mean the like cooked food and we wanted to transition to raw food but i really don't know whether i can go with raw food or you know raw i can go with uh, vegan food for my dog too i really don't understand like is it really good or bad so just want to ask you all these questions yeah yeah absolutely okay so um so so if it's natural and cooked food i would be what i what i would never recommend and this is obviously for everybody who's on the on the um call is i would never recommend fasting a dog that's on um kibble because it okay. is kind of like or even though they say there's healthy ones and some are made from from or from you know from natural ingredients it's uh-huh. still kind of like you and me living on a dried you know dried biscuit diet so it's very dehydrating for the dogs okay. um and, and so i definitely for anybody who's listening to this video um now or in the future i would never recommend fasting your dog if you're feeding it kibble okay, okay. Mm-hmm. so but if you're if it's on a i would if if the dog is definitely cuz fasting an animal and us for any duration can only benefit them um it's it's generally it's us and our emotional attachment to the dogs and our emotional attachment to food that is what prevents us from from allowing our pets to fast they would if we'd had right. them from puppies and hadn't given them you know three or four meals a day as you're recommended when you first get a puppy they would have instinctively known when they needed food and when they didn't but of course we've habituated them to more or less our own way of eating habits and so they've learned those but from what i would say to you if if you're definitely if it's a home cooked food and it's definitely natural and it he's and he's been on that for a while so you haven't just you know changed it in the last week from kibble i would allow him at least a month of eating you know a home cooked diet and like okay. say in an ideal world you'd be on um Uh, then the best food that you could give your dog would be raw chicken and the bones so i'd go and buy th- chicken thighs okay. um or a whole chicken for a dog the same size of your dog i would be buying a whole chicken um and cutting off all the skin and then like say when you get underneath are oh, there you are um and then when you actually take the skin off if there's any excess fat like if you can see lots of white bits then i'd cut those off and then i'd give your dog the whole piece of chicken and he would eat the whole chicken one meal a day because again i've 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 monitored oh he's gorgeous <laughs> what yeah. what you will notice like you what you will notice if you change the feeding and start introducing fasting is that he will lose weight um okay. and and lots of people have have um concerns about that but but i can assure you there's the leaner they are the more energy they have and and you know a dog in the wild a wolf in the wild would be very very lean i've got plenty of pictures and videos of wolves in the wild so if anybody ever wants to see that but yeah so i would uh, i would experiment um if he's on this diet that you're home cooking i would start with 24 hours um which is really you know it, it, if you feed him yep. one meal a day yeah i would start with 24 yeah. hours 
Um, yeah. And then he's go- he is just gorgeous. How old is he? He's a three-year-old now. See, he's oh, looking lovely. at you now. <laughs> so that's, you're, just at the, you're just at the point where, and yeah. again, depending on what you've been feeding him, you're at the point because when they're young, they're sit- a bit like children and us. We don't, our, our health, you know, our bad feeding, our bad eating doesn't really kick in until we get to sort of like our mid thirties. You know, if you're really unlucky and you've got very weak genetics, then sometimes it can kick in a lot earlier and you've certainly got symptoms, but nothing that's life, you know, life threatening generally kicks in until you're in your forties with dogs. It starts from when they're three to four now. um, And that's when you start seeing, you know, more, Disease, more yeah. symptoms they're symptoms obviously Got of it. the bad bad feeding um but yeah so i would i would do 24 hours see how you cope because trust me it's harder for you than it will be for your dog <laughs> okay, and yeah. um, and then go for 48 hours and then and then like i say and then i would definitely look if you if you can buy it by the chicken thighs they're really easy I, I found them the easiest things to feed my dogs um and you can get them easily from supermarkets or you know or but- butchers or where you know markets wherever you buy your meat um okay. and then like i say just cut off the skin but give him the whole leg because he will love biting that bone <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um okay. and I'll... and it's obviously their natural food so yeah we'll do that thank you thanks a lot for your feedback thank you my pleasure Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Karen, I just have a question. Just curious, uh, why why are you saying that for the pet owner, it's more difficult when their pet fasts than uh, for the pet itself? Like, uh, yeah. um, like why? Like, in in what sense it is harder? Is it because the pet becomes restless, or what is the reason? It's it's because. Um, and again, I would say it's probably different for people in our group because we already know the benefits that the fasting does, but it's our emotional attachment and our emotional, we emotionally feed our dogs. So like the dog comes back from its walk and it's wagging its tail and it's happy, happy, and it's habitually been fed when it gets back from its walk. And you then, you have to deal with oh my god I'm not feeding my dog mm, <laughs> you know? uh, and he you know and they're looking at you with their little eyes and they've always been fed at that time every day mm. like I say that I dealt with that with mine by giving them you know lots of attention you know we'd come back from a walk and instead of food we would sit down and we'd have cuddles on the sofa you know so mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. how I dealt with it but I know because I've so many I've had hate mail with from people where they're like you can't not feed your dogs you know Mm -hmm. so so I you know and like I say you you have to look at them now they're 11 years old and they look better than when they were two years old so I know I'm doing what's right for the dogs but but other people don't necessarily agree as we know Mm. with the general fasting idea yes yes I got it so yeah that was very clear thank you so much now, um, now in the chat here, someone asked questions for Karen. When an animal has a disease, is it allowed to fast voluntarily or involuntarily without providing food? Is there a difference in fasting for different types of animals, herbivores, carnivores? So it's basically we can divide it into two. So when an animal yeah. has a disease, is it allowed to fast voluntarily or involuntarily? without providing food so that's the first question okay so if you're fasting your your pet your dog um we're to, we're talking we're talking about cat dogs at the moment and if we want to talk about cats then that's slightly different because cats are obligate carnivores where they basically only eat um meat and and we have to be careful when fasting cats because they have um, they can't their livers don't process fat in the way that um, other animals do so you have to be very careful I've definitely known people to fast cats um, and they've you know and they've had no problems at all but you do have to be much more cautious and aware and you'd have to look for any symptom you know that that, 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 that anyway so that's cats so just be cautious with cats and contact me if you're thinking about fasting a cat but for this person um if you're fasting an animal trust me you're going to have to take the food away (laughs) 
<laughs> because and, and you know like you say you do get them where if if the if the animal has been fed naturally from you know from a puppy that a puppy would know when when to eat and when not to eat but if it's been habitually fed this your your this this dog if it's been habitually fed on a regular basis like all of our pets are then you will definitely have to take the food away to and and do it i mean I, 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 the biggest the fantastic if with us on this group the best time to fast your pet would be fridays when you're doing this mm, wow. Because, wow because then it's kind of like a bonding exercise you know and they you know they they're fasting with you and you know it's it, it's very different it's lovely so yeah, yeah. so did i answer that question question properly when an animal has a disease is it allowed to pass voluntary or involuntary so i would say if an animal is ever not wanting its food never ever force it i've got friends who have got dogs and and i used to be the same i used to beg joey to eat his food because he wasn't interested in eating the same way as the other dog that i'd got and he you know he would just and i used to literally pray thinking will he eat today but i was overfeeding him because now now that he's fed and he's fasted regularly he will eat anything and if there's even a mention of a food coming you know food coming his way he is wagging his tail and wanting it whereas mm -hmm. it, you know i used to it used to be the complete reverse so i would yeah so the answer to that question is um if your dog doesn't ever doesn't want to eat allow it to fast and allow it to fast as long as it wants to um and then if you want your dog to fast because it is having a few health you know if you're it, well it's healthier to fast the dog on a regular basis anyway but if you if you're noticing a few health um symptoms then i would say start by fasting once a week with you on a Friday and definitely you'll have to take the food away leave the water but my experience which again you hear all this negativity about water fasting and dry fasting um, I always think you have to look to na nature now my dogs obviously I've regularly fasted I've done five days five days fasting they've never been obviously they've never been particularly sick you can do up to 30 days fasting a dog and it would still be fine but um but but they my dogs never drink during their fasting so you hear all this negativity about dry fasting and I watch my dogs and that's why I don't believe it I believe that we've probably got maybe more waste in our systems and therefore water will help to remove the the waste easier than possibly a dry fast i don't know but all i ever, i've watched i've got two dogs brother and sister and i've fasted them now for the best part of six years on a regular basis sometimes five days sometimes just 48 hours a week um and they never ever drink water when they're fasting yeah karen but i have a question so are if they want to drink, are they allowed? To yeah, drink, or you... I leave the water down. The water's ah, okay. there. Okay. So if they wanted to drink, it's there, but never. That's that's the interesting thing is they never, they just sleep or, you know, and their activity level is normal. Um. So, yeah, so I think that's quite mm. interesting regarding people that have all the negativity around water fasting and dry fasting, Um. but watch what the animals do. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Karen, and I also wanted to ask if you could emphasize or if you could summarize the few benefits of fasting along with your pet. So you, you okay. mentioned emotional bonding, but uh, is there, could you reiterate uh, on that or maybe add some more benefits to that? Well, again, obviously this is what it, Obviously, the health benefits are, are, are there for the both of you for a start. So, um, so yeah, definitely emotional bonding. Um, and yeah i just like I say it and the bond is so important with you and your pets anyway but um but yeah and then the health benefits like I say even a 24 hour i would say really a 48 hour is is an, more optimal than 24 hours but for starting 24 hours but um but yeah yeah the health if they if they're itchy that they will stop itching in just just a 24 hour fast you will see itching reduced you will see smells dog smells um 
like often they have gunky ears, even in just 24, a regular 24 hour fast, um, you would see that reduce, see the smell, the gunky ears would be reduced, the doggy smell would be reduced. Um, mm. And going forward, if you feed correctly and um, feed correctly and regularly fast, you will never have teeth cleaning. People often have to take their dogs to get their, their teeth cleaned. You will never have a problem with fleas or ticks or other parasites that often people have problems with with dogs. Um, the coat, the quality of the coat will change. It's the same as us, you know, yeah. from a health benefit. So yeah, if you, it, whatever you've benefited from in your regular weekly fast, mm -hmm. you can share that with your dog and it will thank you for it, I assure you. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And now, actually, I noticed that uh, um, in our previous questions, the question there was the second part. Is there yeah. a difference uh, in fasting for different types of animals, herbivores, carnivores, etc.? OK, so, that, yeah, that, I think that's really interesting. Um, so, I ha again, I haven't got a horse now, but I again, I was looking after my boss had horses and I was looking after them so I researched a lot about diet and feeding for horses and what I found out was that the, a reason a lot of horses actually get sick these days and they you know they struggle with overweight is because historically when the grass like obviously we have you know you have spring summer autumn winter and autumn obviously is the grass is is slowly going into hibernation or whatever grass, grass does and then winter you don't actually have grass and then spring you get this the spring grass well um and from my when when i was looking when i was when i had my own horses you'd have to be very careful in the spring because the horses could overeat and they could you know and they're because obviously the grass probably tastes best in spring when it's <laughs> when it's fresh and it's growing and it ha and they haven't had it for the winter um you always had to be careful. Now, I've since learned that traditionally horses would have fasted during the winter season. So as the so as the season, you know, nature looks after these animals naturally. And so they would have lost weight in the winter because the grass wasn't there. And then they would have been able to deal with the spring grasses naturally. And obviously they would have been ready for it because it would have put on weight. Whereas now we feed them, obviously we, we you know, we, I, me, you know, you feed them, you feed them all year round. So they have hay and they're stabled and da dee da dee da So we're, you know, like everything, we take taking them away from nature. So yes, with the herbivores, um, like I say, I haven't got a huge amount of experience with them, but I would say that that's the pattern. They would naturally eat when nature provides the food for them. And then they would naturally fast or eat a lot less, or they would forage and find other food. Like horses, they, they forage on twigs and sticks and hedges and things, which is natural for them and they enjoy it. So, um, so yeah, so that's what, what I'd say about herbivores. Um, if there's anything else specific about a herbivore, uh, um, let me know. If they're talking about rabbits and things, I'd, I wouldn't know so much about rabbits, but I could find out for them because I've got friends that have got rabbits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then carnivores. And again, the only real obligate carnivore that there is is the cat, which obviously is the lion, is the you know domesticated lion. A dog, interestingly enough, is actually a fat, facultative omnivore which means they can basically eat anything if they if they need you know if they need to so their bodies can adapt and what a lot of people uh, what what I do in the summer because of the heat um, and they don't and therefore they don't tolerate the meat so well in the summer months when it's hot I will feed my dogs fruits um, and they will have, you know, they love banana. That, well, there isn't a fruit that my dogs won't eat. Um, I will feed them fruit. Um, you, and yeah, I, I will say, say that. Bananas, obviously, if they're hungry, and then obviously watermelon, mangoes, anything. And that helps them regulate their temperature in the summer. Um, and, and yeah, and if you're trying to lose weight for a dog, uh, a fruit diet is awesome for them.
-hmm. as well as fasting. Mm. And in terms of their physiology, can they handle this fruit sugar? There is no problem for them handling this sugar? Absolutely, absolutely. Again, there's actually, again, I follow a wolf, um, a, a wolf, um, they look at that. They, they monitor the wolves. It's the um, in in Yellowstone Park in the US, and they they have videos and things all around the park. So they monitor the activity of the wolves, and the wolves actually, as soon as berries and 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 I've even seen pictures of wolves up in apple trees where they're actually stealing or coyotes are uh, actually stealing the apples off the apple trees. And so that's the experience of mine. We we've got orchards um, in our garden, and they will go and eat those. You know. They will eat the fermented apples that have fallen on the floor, um, but you know they'll eat that, so they they will forage. But yeah, they do really really well on fruits, mm. um, like we do. <laughs> wow, that's that's uh, wonderful. But, so... they do, uh, but I, what I would say is that they ultimately you only have to look at their teeth to know that they aren't you know they aren't frugivores. Um, so they do need meat and they do need bone. Um, a lot of people obviously seem to get comfortable with feeding, you know, meat, but not necessarily bone. But the bones, obviously, if you feed them like a whole animal, so a, a chicken, for example, as a meal for a dog, the dog would eat the whole chicken, you know, bones and all, including what's inside the chicken as well, um, mm -hmm. organs and things. Um, and that obviously the beauty of the feeding, the feeding the bones is that they will clean their teeth. The bones will clean their teeth as well as sort of, you know, help them on a from the calcium and mineral basis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then we have another question in the chat. When a dog is sick but doesn't stop eating by instinct, how do we know how many days to fast him? So I would say that the, the dog will be able to handle it a lot better than you will be. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Take it from me to start with. But but yeah, I would say um, a bit like I, I, I said um, to, I, I didn't catch his name, that, that the guy. Yeah, yeah, been, yeah been, been Kata, been Kata. Uh, Well, again, I would say start with 24 hours. It depends how sick the dog is. I would say a minimum of three days if the dog is pretty sick. But again, take, in, take into consideration what I said about the food that you're feeding. If you're feeding kibble, just don't fast. But um, transition them onto a more natural homemade diet, preferably raw, preferably raw chicken. Cut off the skin of the chicken the thighs and then feed it. I, I don't know the size of your dog, but most dogs can handle chickens. Um, even the small chihuahuas. One of my friends has got rescued chihuahuas. So um, she she feeds them chicken legs. Um, so, yeah, transition the diet, then introduce the fasting um, and I, I would go with three days. And if you can handle three days, that's the, you know, that, that would be a good time scale for your dog to start reversing that, you know, the disease. Um, and then it, longer, obviously, once you've done it once and if you're confident, then, um, then you know, anything up to 30 days. I mean, a friend of mine, they, they had their dog on 30, 30 days of watermelon juice in the summer to revert and, and it lost weight. It, you know, completely transformed its health just on, you know, and you didn't have to fast it. It was just on mm. watermelon for those 30 days. But like I say, I'm not saying feed fruits only. At some point you do want to bring in bones and meat because, you know, we just don't know enough about vegan feeding dogs yet. Um, like I say, mm -hmm. there's plenty of people that are doing it, but I know that they're, you know, they are, you only have to look at their teeth to know they are designed to eat meat. Mm -hmm. I know what happens if I don't feed mine meat for a longish period of time, they will go into hunting mode and they will be looking for their own food. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, that, ma that makes sense. Karen, so what, what was the longest that you fasted your dogs? Yeah, so I've only ever done five days and six nights for them. Um that's just because then, obviously, I I started this lifestyle when they were four, so they were. But I've done that regularly, so I've done that. You know, whenever we travel, I tend to do the fasting when they're out of their normal routine, um, mainly because it's easier on them because they they automatically associate with my normal routine, coming home and 
you know and after a walk and it's their it's their food time um and if i don't feed them they will they go into like the pottinger cat scenario where they actually i think i even wonder if on the way home from a walk they're already going into that mode where their body is preparing for them for eating their food because if i don't feed them and they and i have there's been plenty of times where i've done it but they will get you can hear the they've got acid in their tummy and that what they that will then mean they go outside and they forage on grass which obviously is settling the acid in their stomach which they would have used obviously to break down the food that i would have fed them so so yeah so that there's yeah i could go on forever about this but but yeah so that's so when i take them on you know when i go to stay with with my parents or i visit friends um I never take any food with me and they will fast and like I say, and they comfortably fast because they're out of their usual routine. There's no association with food and timing of food. Um, and, and yeah, so, so, so yeah, so that's, that's the most I've fasted them five days mm. and six nights, but Interesting. I do it regularly. Interesting, Karen. And, uh, and you never saw them even, even during those longer fasts for like four or five days, you never saw them drink water or they, or, yeah. or when it's longer, they do drink water. No, 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 Eric, no, no water whatsoever. Mm. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. And, and then my, my other question, when you, for example, when you take them uh, during, during the fasting days, if you combine it with traveling or visiting your relatives, etc. Uh, so um, uh, do they uh, do they completely do they fast completely or some or uh, when when they go out, I mean, maybe they catch some bugs or some grasses or whatever? No, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, there have been times where I fasted them and they found like dead bone, like bones of a dead animal on, you know, when we've been out walking, there's even been times where they have caught their own food and, you know, and obviously I'm then annoyed because it's like, you know, oh, that's their yeah. fasting window broken. But, but like you say, that is what it is. And, and I don't stress over it. If they had major health problems, then I would be much more strict on the, you know, I wouldn't necessarily take them out walking if I've wanted them to be a hundred percent fasted, yeah. but, um, but no, you know, I let them live their na as natural a lifestyle as I possibly can give them. Mm -hmm. And like I say, there are times where they will find rabbits on the side, you know, probably a rabbit's been hit by a car or something and it's slowly dying in the, in the, in the bushes and they will find it and then, you know, and then they'll eat it and yeah. that's the end of the fast. But, um, but yeah, I don't, take any food with me um mm. there's and and like I say that yeah that if in those scenarios i i have water in the car so that if it was really hot and you know and they were in the car for any length of time i'd got water on board but i can promise you they will just turn their nose up if mm. i'm if they're in fasting mode they'll turn their nose up to water if i put mm. it in a bowl in front of them very interesting very interesting mm -hmm. okay guys do you have any more questions for karen you are welcome to unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Hey, Rivita. Hi, um, hi. I, j I wanted to ask you what uh, is your regular diet now? I mean, okay. Yeah, then, uh, th yeah, so I've got, obviously, I've listened to Marcus's talk, so I'm a complete convert on the fact that we're definitely not meant to eat. <laughs> so, so, uh, and listening to him and his, you know, how he put over those two talks just completely changed my whole attitude. Up till then, I was eating fruit because I thought I needed the nutrition. Um, whereas now that's, you know, that, that, that whole belief system changed during Marcus's talks so now I focus on water fasting and um and I would say four of the days of a week I'm more so yeah four days a week I'm water fasting now and three days I have a two hour eating window and it's mainly fruit but again he educated us to not be so hard on ourselves so you know with you know if you really fancy something then have it so I, I I have done that like I had crisps like I hadn't ever eat you know like why did I want crisps but but there was a time where I you know I obviously fancy and I had crisps and and you know he was right observe your observe yourself they did not feel good <laughs> mm. 
and you didn't want them again. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that I ate that I hadn't eaten. You know, it was like they were forbidden foods and you're never to eat them again. But but I did exactly what Marcus suggested and and ate them went because I wanted them or because someone else had them and then watched how I felt afterwards and oh my god my head would go like headachey um but yeah so so that's that's where I'm at open open that if I do fancy something I can have anything in my two-hour window but there's only three of those two-hour windows a week anyway because the rest of the time I'm water fasting (laughs) and hopefully I'll wean myself off of the water fasting as well because like like Marcus said he's been six months no food no water wow (laughs) I know yeah 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 okay uh, um guys uh, so uh, uh, there was another question I just because we uh, our time is limited and we have lots of questions so um Karen, uh, so another question from the chat. How do we care for our regular elimination process, uh, bowel movement while fasting or OMAD? Yeah, that's it. again, it's interesting. I, I saw that this afternoon. Um, I can speak from my own experience. Um, when I'm fasting or if I'm only eating minimal food, there's very, there is very little bowel bowel movement at all if they have actually if it's actually if somebody so I would actually say when you're fasting or not eating very much it would be quite normal for you not to be eliminating but if and and I would say if there was if you are fasting and you've been eating a lot I would actually and your bowel system isn't working. I've used enemas. So I know how I've, I actually even, yeah, this is bizarre as it sounds. I, I did 12 months, every single day, I did eight litres of enema every single day for 12 months. I was following um, the Arnold Eric um, process, um, which is rational uh, no I can't even remember what the system is now but anyway it's Arnold Eric and there's people in the US that obviously follow that diet and they have got they do blogs and they have a online webinar like this on a regular basis and they they recommend enemas every day from my experience this summer I joined Kasha's 90 day course and she didn't recommend enemas at all she recommended eating the whole fruits and the fiber whereas i'd been predominantly juices and smoothies all the time <laughs> liquids so i didn't you know i relied on my enemas for bowel elimination um but but having changed that in the summer this year i did i change from juices and fruits fruit juices and smoothies I went eating the whole fruits and what I found was as soon as I changed that my my bowels worked perfectly I stopped the enemas I was frightened to stop the enemas because I've been doing them for so long but um but she encouraged me well and I weaned I did it I weaned myself so I went from doing them every day to two two or three times a week and then once I realized that not doing the enemas I was actually eliminate, eliminating naturally then I actually had the confidence and I can honestly say that if you eat the whole fruits there's the fiber in the fruits though and you eat you know and you eat enough of those whole fruits your your system will work provided it is working properly if you've been eating the rock you know uh, anything like a sad diet as people would call it then you may need to do regular fasting um, to actually allow your system enough rest for it to regenerate that you know the bowel system as a whole before it will function effectively Mm -hmm. do you think that answers that yeah yes Karen yeah yeah absolutely so uh, so during your enema period you would do uh, a how many liters every day eight liters I've got a four liter enema bag yeah. and I would do I would fill that up twice yeah and would it all uh, like uh, you would bring in all four liter like four liter yeah yeah, yeah. Really? not to begin with I use I start you obviously you you're it, 
it, you learn, you know, your enemas adapt with you. So uh, to begin with, I couldn't even get a liter in, you yeah. know, without having to dash to the loo and it would all come out. So, so you must either your, your muscles obviously adapt, but yeah, I could. And again, that was another Alice tip because she recommended these, you know, four liter enema bags. Mm. And um, I'm, I did. I started with just two liters. I was happy with my two liter bag to start with, and then, mm -hmm. and I think I bought the four liter, but never used it. And then, you know, once I did use it, it yeah, slow. It, I started off from going from a two liter to then being able to take three liters quite easily, and then eventually four liters. So mm. amazing! You are like a little Buddha belly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Okay, and then we have uh, now we are back to um, fasting gay pets. So um, the last question here in the chat that we got on WhatsApp, uh, how to deal with an anxious behavior in a dog due to the suppression of food? Is that instinctual or is it a learned behavior? So I, I was trying to understand that. Do we assume that the dog is anxious if she doesn't feed the dog? I think, I think that's the idea, like because of, because of lacking food, yeah. Yeah, because if she's not feeding food, the dog, yeah. the dog gets anxious. Yes. I would say yeah. that that could be you. Uh, again, I, I, uh, the, our dogs are, are going back to the spiritual side of my um, exploration with my dogs is my dogs are very much my mirror. And um, if I'm not totally comfortable with something, Joey, particularly my boy dog, he's the most sensitive of the two of them and he will not settle. So I would, the first thing I would say about that is how comfortable are you about not feeding your dog? That's the first thing. Once, if you're a regular faster and you're comfortable about that, then I would say um, there's pro probably, um, yeah, I would just say that, I'd probably want a bit more details, but I would say there wouldn't be any reason apart from you feeling a little bit uncomfortable about not feeding your dog, why your dog would suddenly become anxious because mm -hmm. you're re withdrawing food because it's actually the dogs would know it's more of a natural, more natural than we do. <laughs> um how to deal with in a dog how to deal with anxious behavior in a dog due to the suppression of food is it instinctual or learned behavior so yeah that's that's what i would say i would say look at how comfortable you are if the dog is is an uh, if the dog is exhibiting anxiety because you're not feeding it then i would look i would I would look at what the habitual is a bit like my story is that my dogs associated food at certain times because I had habitually fed them. I, I, I'm in the process of setting up a, a, a course that will take people from not feeding, you know, from feeding their dog regularly through to 90 days so that they can completely transition their dogs on my course. And um, one of the um, sections is actually on um on random feeding so that you don't educate your dogs to associate food with certain times of the day or certain actions that you take it's it's about feeding the dog ad hocly you know throughout and changing those times on a regular basis because in the wild if the dog had to catch a rabbit or had to catch you know an animal to keep you know to feed itself it would not have food at nine o'clock every day or food at three o'clock every afternoon it would you know so what part of my course is educating people to not feed their dogs on a regular basis so it could be that and like I say the other su suggestion is to see how comfortable you are about withdrawing food from your dog um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that helps it absolutely very good answer now then Kata, you posted uh, a question in the chat. Uh, please unmute yourself and just ask it directly. Yes, uh, I mean, Marisa, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah hey, um, I have a 14 year old kid. Uh, he's a um, youngster, I think. Uh, what type of, I mean, is it okay to do him for fasting uh, regularly, like once in a week or uh, once in two weeks? And uh, what type of diet do you guys recommend for him? Like, um, I'm seeing some small issues, like, you know, a lot of pimples and acne is in, in his face. And it's been like almost like one year or two years. And we are giving him a lot of fruits and juices, but I just want to ask, um, is fasting is okay for kids like him? It's, it's interesting because 
most sources i'm surprised as much as anybody but most sources that that i've read do not recommend fasting and, until and, until they're 18 okay that's not to you know that's not to you know if, if i think it's probably because then they're mature you know the maturity that they that they you know 14 year old this day and age would know what they're doing do you regularly fast on a weekly basis yourself i do i do yes me and my wife does yes every week we and, do fasting one day yeah and is your son actually interested does he actually want to fast with you yes uh, actually whenever he's sick like for example whenever he's fever or cold or cough or flu i'll force him to fast him and he he does it uh, 18 hours or 20 hours sometimes and he drinks some watermelon juice that's it yeah he does that but not like a continuous 24 hour water fasting he never does, does that yeah i, I i'm you know I'm of the belief that there's no way it can do anything except benefit him. It, definitely water fasting. If you were talking about dry fasting, I'd, you know, be more hesitant. Start with water fasting and then maybe introduce dry fasting. But, but, um, but yeah, if he's open to it, I, I would edge towards. Let's, yeah, like you say, if you've done it twelve, and and he's and he genuinely wants to do it. It's not parents that want to make him healthy. I would, right. I would genuinely say. Come on then, you know, join us for the for twelve hours, and then join us for for the next eight, you know, next time, join us for eighteen hours, and then okay. see how he feels and how how he how he responds. Yeah, how he responds okay. and how if he's keen to go the next week because it's it can't do any harm. It's you know, it's natural for us not to eat. <laughs> right. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, do you have any more questions? Because now towards the end, we are going to talk about a new, co a new course, which uh, Karen has developed. But before that, if you have any more questions on fasting for humans or for animals, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask. Okay, Karen, so um, tell us a little bit about this course, because... Uh, in your correspondence, in our correspondence, you mentioned that you were developing a um, course, but I myself have no idea whether it's an online course, whether it's a, it a, um, involves like personal consultations or just written materials or videos. So just from the beginning, completely tell us a little bit about the course. Who is it for? You know, what kind of benefits people can get uh, doing this course and stuff like that. Okay, so so yeah, so Eric, it's a it's a bit of everything of what you've just described in that it's a ninety day, um, it's online in that I will be doing regular videos. Um, there's obviously course materials that people can read at home, um, and um, it. But the whole point of it is that it's a ninety day process to literally turn around your pet's um, health over the time with me on you know on tap so that you I can hold your hand through that first fast I can hold your hand through where to go and buy the food I can hold your hand on how to prepare the food I can hold your hand on any symptoms that might arise you know that can be you know our dogs end up being our babies and so and so you know if suddenly they're they're wanting to eat grass it it can freak you out you know so so yeah so the whole it's a it's a proven step by step um completely revolutionize your dog's health and the lovely thing is it will save you fortunes in vet bills vet bills are so expensive these day and age um and and food because it's can you please send details? Oh, yeah. Okay, I will. And you I'll give that Eric my details as well. And, and uh, absolutely, yeah. uh, everything is good. So we'll tell them now. But also, everything is going to be below this video. It's going to be uploaded on YouTube tomorrow. So you will find all the contact details there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll introduce you to fasting if you're if you're comfortable with fasting. And like I say, we'll transition your dog to the right diet that's suitable for fasting and um, or cats if you've got cats. Um, and um, and yeah, it's it it will be a fun process. You'll learn so much. Uh, I've, I I know how to groom dogs. I know how to cut their how to trim their toenails so you don't have to go to the vet to do that anymore I groom both my dogs I clip both my dogs so you will you will know how to 
confidently look after every aspect of your dog on a natural basis that and and you will say fortunes in worming and fleas and tick products you know all the essentials there's no supplements because it's all you know done by diet by the correct feeding and fasting protocols and like i say we'll we'll design a protocol a feeding plan that works with you know what you want to feed your dog when you want to feed your dog and by the end of it yeah you'll be confident that you, you'll never need to go to a vet again because most foods um, most diseases are caused by wrong feeding um, or overfeeding is another big problem um, so you'll never need a vet again except you know maybe for the odd accident I've definitely I've definitely had dogs that have charged after wildlife and and done their knees, done their their cruciate ligaments in before. So, but again, I, one of them I had to have surgery because it was a complete tear. The other one was an was an injury which I managed to heal naturally. So I've you know I've got lots of education um, on anything that can happen to your dog. You will never ever have to pay for vet bills again. I promise you, and you'll save a fortune in feeding bills. Certainly, if you're feeding commercially produced food. Wow. So, Wow, that's amazing. Sounds amazing. Now, Karen, so this course is for just dog owners or uh, dog and cat owners. What kind of animals is it suitable for? Yeah, I mean, it's the dog, obviously the dogs, uh, dogs and cats, 100%. I mean, I've had dogs and cats and, and, and yeah, dogs and cats, they're, they're my speciality because that's okay. it. I had three cats at one point and two dogs. And, and so, yeah, so I know the ins and outs. I would say 100% dogs and cats. Um, dogs will get more because, again, with the fasting with cats is a, is, is a bit more restrictive. But, again, it depends on the health of your cats. I'll certainly be the expert. That if your cat does need to fast, I'll hold your hand and we'll go through that together. Mm, very good very good and how does it happen like if someone enrolls on the course like uh, um, are they going to like uh, are you going to hold group meetings throughout the course or how, how does it work like in terms of the time a person needs to allocate for that particular course yeah I mean again it it, it, it will be there'll be a weekly group call um, for us to obviously you know question and answers it's a maximum of 10 people that will be on the course um and um yeah there'll be a weekly group call but you'll have whatsapp access to me 24 7 there'll obviously be course material so that you can educate yourself on you know on on your dog being the right foods for your dog um why i don't recommend feeding on a regular basis there'll be lots of course materials fasting and the different fasting protocols um and uh, you know and and then like the like the flea and tick prevention um the, the grooming side of it um and and then any specific problems that any of the participants are you know mm. struggling with they may have skin problems they may have ear problems they may have um anal gland problems you know there's there's lots of different ways that disease manifests through the dogs the root cause is the same for most for, for all of them which is overfeeding and wrong feed wrong foods but um but yeah so we'll deal with all of those um on, a, on each week you'll get a structured course module each week yeah. throughout the call throughout the 12 weeks we'll have our weekly group call we'll I'll ha that group call will be set up in a in a, a, a probably a facebook group um and then that the, the participants can actually communicate with each other and help each other as well so mm, um which I would feel helps too amazing and uh, karen and uh, the materials uh, are mm -hmm. they um, in the form of the written articles or videos or how does it work both mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the videos and and written materials which they can either download and have as printed materials but the videos obviously what i've done is i've actually done written materials based on what's said in the videos and then um and they can either download them to a kindle and read them online or they can print them off and have them as a, and, and by the end of the 12 weeks they'll actually have a book which they can keep for the life obviously of their pets um share with friends and family for their pets and you know like I say, it's a self-empowering 
course you'll never have to come back to me after it you'll be confident and you'll also know when when your dog needs to go to a vet or cat needs to go to a vet and when it doesn't so and you'll have that confidence to to know that you know what's right for your pet and you don't have to suddenly run off to the vet and it costs you xyz to mm. to get some advice that you could have treated up quite confidently at home wow that's unbelievable okay guys so before we wrap it up uh, do you have any more questions uh, in relation to the course, in relation to what we have just spoken about? If you have any more questions, just unmute yourself and you can ask. Okay, Karen. And uh, so, um, and all all kinds of dogs are welcome to the course like i mean dog owners like um yeah all kinds of dogs and cats basically right yeah absolutely yeah that, mm -hmm. that's it they're they're just wolves in in domestic dogs clothing mm, I see. <laughs> and the cats are just lions in um in domestic cats clothing so um so yeah that every dog has has suffers with the same problems it's basically feeding the wrong foods and feeding too much of it uh, is mm, ultimately the main the main problem i see Okay, Karen, now tell us, so if, if anyone, if someone wants to enroll on the course to enroll, so what should they do? How can they contact you, basically? Yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll give you my email. We're, we're, like I say, we're, we've been working 24-7 this week because we were hoping it would be ready for, to launch today, but it's mm -hmm. not. We'll finish it over the weekend. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'll give you all my contact details. Um, and then you can people can contact me and we'll have a, a, a phone call so that you can actually talk to me about where you're at so that I, I, I can um, make sure that the course is right for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. OK, guys, so you will find uh, uh, you will find all the contact information below this video and the channel where you will find this video uploaded is called the Weekly Fasting Group YouTube channel. So uh, you will find it very, very easily. And if you are in the WhatsApp group and if you still have encountering difficulties contacting Karen or whatever, you can always write me a personal message and I'll connect between both of you. And meanwhile, uh, I just want to thank, thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, it was uh, fascinating. I think for both people who have pets and who don't have pets, it's a fascinating subject. Also, we can learn a lot for ourselves by observing our pets and their patterns and yeah we'll keep in touch hope to see you in in our future webinars and yeah, and hopefully many people will uh, study from you will learn from you yeah brilliant thank yeah. you so and thank you guys thank you for coming and all the blessings to you bye 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 thanks eric <laughs> thank you bye bye bye